the inverse functions of sine and cosine. You should be familiar with the values of sine and cosine from the unit circle. In this lesson, we will define the inverse functions of sine and cosine and find some special values. The sine function has as its input an angle and has as its output a number between negative 1 and 1. We can create the inverse of the sine function by reversing the roles of the input and the output. The inverse sine function is written as sine with a negative 1 that looks like an exponent. This is not a reciprocal, it is an inverse. Y is the angle whose sine is x. This expression asks for the angle whose sine is the square root of 2 over 2. You may be tempted to say that 45 degrees is the angle whose sine is square root 2 over 2, but that is only partly correct. There are many angles whose sine is the square root of 2 over 2. For instance, 135 degrees. We could go around a full circle to 405 degrees. We could go backward to negative 225 degrees. Which one should we pick? In finding an inverse to y equals x squared, we had to make a choice as to whether we wanted the positive number or the negative number to be the square root we chose the positive number. It was an arbitrary choice, but we understand the square root symbol to mean the positive square root. For the inverse sine, we have to choose between the right half of the circle or the left half. We will choose the right half, so that the output of the inverse sine function is always between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Here are the common values with which you should be familiar. Of course, we could also give the answers in radians rather than degrees. A similar choice is needed for the inverse cosine. For any given number between negative 1 and 1, there are two angles between 0 and 360 with that given number as its cosine value. One is on the top of the circle the other is on the bottom. We will choose the one on the top of the circle so that the output of the inverse cosine function is always between 0 and 180 degrees. Here are the common values with which you should be familiar for inverse cosine and in radians. To recap, the inverse of a trig function reverses the roles of the input and the output so that the input to an inverse trig function is a number and the output is an angle. The numbers that are input into the inverse sine and inverse cosine functions range from negative 1 to 1 and include the special unit circle values of 1 half, square root 2 over 2, and square root 3 over 2. The outputs are angles. For inverse sine, the output should be on the right half of the unit circle between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees. For inverse cosine, the output should be on the top half of the unit circle between 0 degrees and 180 degrees.